Now that we're coming to the close of 2022, it's time to sort of look back on some of the amazing movies that have come out in the horror genre over the past year. And something that has gotten me super excited is just the wide array of styles and types of horror movies that are coming out today. It, I mean, you really can run the gamut of whatever style of horror movie you're looking for. You can rest assured that there are many different entries that will appease you. And so it's an exciting time to, to be into horror movies. And so I'm going to go back through and talk about my 10 favorites of the year. And I know I've only been doing this channel for a couple months. A lot of these uh, are, will scale back, obviously, to January. And actually, some of these movies are sort of the impetus to make this channel in the first place. So some of the movies that I'm mentioning here, I've already done larger videos on. And so I'll put a link during the actual section so that you can click on it and check it out in more detail if you want. All of these, this particular list will all be spoiler free. So don't worry about um, anything here spoiling something that uh, down the road. So let's get into it. Number 10 is Smile. This movie had a great sense of atmosphere and an excellent acting performance from the lead, Sosie Bacon. I just loved the character work and the slow burn nature of the movie where it was building out its premise in a very methodical way. I thought there were probably one too many jump scares and the last act kind of falls apart a little bit. Uh, where they decided to go with an ending that was kind of very typical Hollywood horror as opposed to something that tied up the character and the story in one neat little bow. But ultimately, it is a solid entry and at times genuinely terrifying horror movie out of a major studio, which is rare. Number nine is Barbarian. Now, there, there might be a little bit of a recurring theme here, but... I loved the first half of Barbarian. I thought the acting and the tension were top notch. I thought visually it was striking and the atmosphere that it created was fantastic. I loved the calling out of the stereotypical dumb moves that you would see in horror movies. And I loved the fact that our main character does all the things that would go against those stupid moves like checking IDs and making sure that she's not drinking anything from a stranger's cup. All of that was really smart and well done. Once the story shifts a bit into Justin Long's character, I thought the story kind of started to take on water a little bit for me. And the ending kind of got a little silly at times. Still, its use of story building and character progression is very enjoyable, and I would definitely recommend it, despite it kind of falling off at the end. Number eight is Moloch. Moloch is such a great little throwback horror film. It really felt to me like it was something made in the 80s. I mean, <laughs> creepy bog, check. Creepy old legend, check. Creepy ghost stuff, check. It was just a solid, pure ghost story with some great naturalistic acting and a very grounded feel. Maybe a couple jump scares, uh, too many, but easily overlooked. Number seven, Crimes of the Future. This is vintage Cronenberg here. Weird, awkward, sexual, gross, uncomfortable, Everything you would expect from him, just great performances out of the cast and some well-told real-world commentary. Number six, What Josiah Saw. Maybe more of a thriller than a horror if we want to get super specific, but excellent use of tension and suspense watching the tale of these three siblings and their return to their childhood home of trauma. Fantastic performances of our main cast with actually... Two former Terminator alums, uh, Robert Patrick and Nick Stahl. The, the first act here is maybe a little too clumsy, but ultimately it is a twisty, haunting story that really delivers. Number five, X. The master of horror, Ty West, steps into the slasher genre with what seems to be a very typical story, 
but adds a flair to it that completely sets it apart. With the patience he has behind the camera and the cast of characters that never really falls into that cliche world, it really does elevate it from what you would think of as a stereotypical slasher film. I mean, maybe could have used one additional story layer, which is my biggest complaint, but really solid with a great dual role performance by Mia Goth. Number four is The Cursed, an excellent, engaging, werewolf-style movie about a group of gypsies that got run off of their land and then curses an item which sets into motion a mystery of a pretty solid monster movie. Now, they wisely hide the creature as much as they can, and they use it to its most effectiveness. The story itself is kind of a little bit awkwardly framed, which does a bit of a disservice because it, it feels like it's trying to have like this big end reveal, but it didn't really need that kind of reveal to make it exciting. Also, this movie might have one of the most impressive one or long takes you'll see this year. Number three is Something in the Dirt, a fascinating, methodically paced science fiction horror movie by the guys who brought us The Endless, Resolution, Spring, but it focuses on figuring out why a simple supernatural event is happening, which sends them down a rabbit hole of theories and wild conspiracies and ancient legends, but the movie wisely doesn't focus on that specifically, and instead it focuses on the two leads themselves and how these things affect them individually and their relationship together. It's interesting, it's fun and clever. Highly recommend it. Number two is The Innocence. Without question, some of the best child acting I have seen in a while. This supernatural take of a group of children that develop supernatural powers never goes above minimalistic, but it doesn't make it any less captivating. Each kid uses their powers in different ways, but all of it is kind of held in check by, by keeping the events so small. So it's like this secret world that only the children are experiencing and the adults are just oblivious to it. It's atmospheric, it's tense, it's moving, it's sad, um, but it also has some of the most impressive low-key visual effects I've seen in a while. Number one, Pearl. I cannot say enough good things about this movie. From the amazing performance of Mia Goth to the incredible production design uh, where they mix these bright and cheer cheery colors with the dark undertone of poverty during the First World War. Although the movie is a bit light on quintessential horror tropes, where it thrives is in a dark character study of a girl who is certain she is destined for more and will do anything to achieve that. Sure, there's some gore moments and the final act plays out as you would kind of expect, but this movie lives and dies with the slow, methodical way the main character kind of descends into darkness. Mia Goth is incredible, and Ty West is at the top of his game. If we lived in a world where horror movies were treated equally, it would be nominated for several Oscars. So that is my top 10 2022 horror movies of the year. And I want to say thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. I'm excited about what's to come in 2023. There's a whole bunch of horror movies I'm looking forward to. But in the meantime, let me know what you think. What's your top 10? I'm always interested to find out where would you have rated mine differently? Would you have moved stuff around? Would you have added something? But I'd love to hear your comments. I hope you all have a great holiday and a happy new year.